everyone, we were at PAX East 2017. I'm joined by Thermal Mike from Thermal Take. We're gonna be talking about some common misconceptions and mistakes with liquid cooling because we are both talking about this. There's a lot of things we see people do wrong with liquid cooling either because it's their first time or they haven't learned the right way or whatever. So let's start with the common mistakes. What are some of the most frequent mistakes you see when you're looking at like YouTube videos and stuff like that? Well, you know, I, I see a lot of stuff, of course. You know, a lot of people also ask me, hey, what's the best way to go? Um, you know, the most important thing I would see is uh, making sure that the tubing is going to fit in the fitting properly. Because a lot of people might cut a little corner. And, you know, that little corner can be a big problem for you later down the road. Um, so making sure that the tube fits into the fitting, everything's tight, you know, but not too tight. Some people get a little freaked out about over tightening things. And especially with a lot of blocks that are now acrylic, you know, seeing the transparent stuff. I mean, you can definitely see that uh, become a problem. You know, people get a little too over anxious about some things, right? So, uh, you know, us here at Thermal Take, we're trying to educate people, you know, show them what you can learn from us as far as using our product. I mean, like our, our fittings, for example, they have a three O-ring design. So there's two O-rings on the inside with an additional O-ring on the out, and it's a compression fitting. So it secures it properly. So it's real important to look at that when you're looking at, you know, different fittings, different colors. There's a lot of options out there. So we want to make sure that the Thermal Take option is going to be a good option. Yeah, I guess to give folks some credentials, you do liquid cooling all day, every day. I mean, you did this mod in a couple days, right? Yeah, it was a couple of days. I mean, the paint process took a little bit, but once we got that, and then, you know, also Asus hooked us up with this Maximus 9 board, uh, and we got that, like, last minute, because it was kind of a rush, you know, for CES, you know, typical stuff. Um, but, yeah, a couple days, put it together, did the tube work, a lot of fun. Yeah, so Mike does a lot of liquid cooling, knows his stuff. Uh, let's talk about mixing metals. That's another really common thing we hear about, like mixing aluminum and copper, nickel-plated copper and whatever. Give us a rundown on that. So, I mean, you know, most of our blocks that we offer are nickel-plated. For the most part, a lot of our newer SKUs are, it's a copper coal plate, but it's nickel-plated to, you know, prevent the corrosion stuff and everything. And a lot of our new line is all nickel-plated, so it makes it real safe, real neutral to be able to be used in a lot of different complex systems, right, and using different products. Um, we do also have other products that are copper-based, but that does fall on the coolant. What type of coolant do you use, and is that coolant going to support mixed metals? You know, for example, our C1000 opaque supports a lot of different mixed metals, more than what you may see out there. Um, so we're just trying to make things even just more options, more user-friendly, more compatibility. Right, the main thing that we're looking out for there, I guess, is corrosion, right? Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, you know, corrosion or stuff growing in there and all that kind of stuff, you want to make sure that you don't put just regular water, definitely not something from the tap, right? But, um, you know, our coolants come pre-mixed got all the biocides and stuff in there, so that way the coolant should last you a good 12 months. We usually recommend to flush at least within 12 months. And with, uh, with mentioning biocides, so most of these coolants, at least the ones you sell, that's, those agents are mixed in there. Uh, is there a case where someone would want to add their own biocide? Well, yeah, if you get a coolant that does not have a biocide in it, then you're definitely, you know, it's something you have to look into, like a kill coil, you know, a lot of those different additive stuff that they have to pre-mix it. But, it, you get the formula mixed a little wrong, you can have some chemical reactions. So to make it a little bit easier, we'd like to have a pre-mixed solution versus everybody having to figure out, you know, what's the best mix. And, you know, they feel more comfortable with the build. What about bubbles? That was the other thing we're talking uh, about. Like, I build this, I do my liquid cooling, I've seen a ton of bubbles. Should I be freaked out? Yeah, I mean, one of the things I get from a lot of people is they'll send me a picture of their system, right? And they'll be like, hey, there's all these bubbles in here. Is this going to go away? Is this a problem? Is it going to overheat? You know, I mean, just relax. I mean, a lot of times this is going to take a little bit to work. One thing I usually recommend is put power just to the pump itself. Let the pump run for a while. Let the system run and purge all the air out. Sometimes you might have to tilt the system a little bit to get that bubble out. But it's always good to do that. Everything else is off, no power to it. And then once you get everything comfortable, you feel comfortable about it, then go ahead and fire it up. Yeah, right. Just running the power through the, all the liquid components, liquid cooling components first makes a whole lot of sense because then you're at really no risk of damaging the system, even in the event of a leak. Yeah, because right? yeah, if you have a leak and everything's off, it, it's the safest way to go. Right. Yeah, there's the other thing is with leaks, how frequent are they? Where do things normally leak? How do you prevent that type of thing? Well, I would say the most important thing to prevent and where you're going to see the issue probably the most is your fittings because that's the largest quantity of problems that can occur. And then with the fitting, making sure that when you do, especially hard tubing, that the hard tube is cut properly and it fits all the way into the fitting. Don't cut corners there, folks, because that could be a small little leak that you'll see in the first day or maybe even later and you're like, oh, hey, what happened? You know, so keeping sure that you know what's going on and making sure everything's set up right is real important. Any other uh, misconceptions or mistakes you want to throw in before we sign off here? Anything you, you see a lot that grinds your gears? 
Well, you know, I mean, a lot of people will take it back on, you know, our aluminums are, our radiators are aluminum, right? Um, I mean, a lot of people may not know, most all AIO radiators out there are aluminum based. I mean, it's a common thing where a lot of people might not think of it that way, but uh, we do protect it and we are looking into some other solutions as well. So definitely stay tuned for some other options and more stuff from Thermaltake here as we go into 2017. Very cool. So for more information, as always, links in the description below. Subscribe for more information, patreon.com slash gamersnext to help us out directly. Mike, thank you for joining me. Hey, absolutely, man. Thanks. It's a pleasure always. We'll see you next time.